Hey, everybody, we're about to go live on 90.1 FM. I'm your host, Nikita Stamps. we got a great show lined up for you today. we got some special guests from all over the country highlighting some wonderful folks from right here in Jackson, Mississippi. So if you're tuning in on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, and all those other places across social media, go ahead and share the link, share the video, sit back, relax, and enjoy the call-in number 6019-485-950 at WMPR. So sit back, relax. We're going to go live in just a second. To all our first-time viewers, go ahead and hit the hit the, um, the like button. Our returning viewers, go ahead and hit the heart button. Post in the chat box where you're viewing from. And um, sit back, relax for a good show. Sponsored by the National Wildlife Federation and Michael Jordan Transportation Service. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody out there in Radio Land. Welcome to another edition of Reviving Mississippi. I'm your host, Dakeitha Stamps. We appreciate recording in progress. We appreciate everybody for always tuning in and allowing us to have good conversations about great topics. And today, as we do every week, we always start our shows off by remembering those folks who are going through bereavement. Bereavement is a very, very tough thing, especially in moments and times like this. So remember, everybody who's going through bereavement or even hospitalization, you folks in the hospital out there, it's very rough out there in situations like this. You can't mourn like you normally mourn. You can't, you know, you know, we're, we're normally our own coping mechanism. So just make sure you take a moment to, to spend some time with each other and let folks know you care. And because one thing I do know, you're going to need a friend one day. And if you ain't never been a friend, it's going to be a little rough on you when your time comes. Today's show being sponsored by the National Wildlife Federation. National Wildlife Federation is a great institution. They've partnered with us in several different projects. And today we'll be having a great conversation about um, you know, uh, farming infrastructure. I got my good friend and mentor, uh, Representative Zakia Summers. She's going to be on as well. And we got some young folks. So sit back and relax for our, our, uh, and watch a great show today. Also, we're sponsored by Michael Jordan Transportation Service. At Michael Jordan Transportation Service, they offer quality transportation services all over the state of Mississippi. So he's a good brother. You can go to www.mjstransportation1.com. I want to start off by um, today by allowing Ms. Uh, Simone Lightfoot to say a few words about the National Wildlife Federation and our partnership. Miss Lightfoot, are you there? I know you didn't plan to talk. I am. There you go. There Thank you, you so much. I am here. So happy. And this partnership has been absolutely wonderful. I refuse to let it come to an end. We started with an eight week uh, commitment in this work and you know how it works. You start and we're going to find a way to continue the partnership with WNPR and, and you and now State Representative Summers. We're so excited of the work we're able to do and to bring young people into this process where they get the opportunity to have some civic engagement experience early on and learn that they can bring their advocacy and their thoughts and concerns to both of you and do what we call lobbying and lobby legislators to make some changes into the laws and so we at the largest conservation organization the most trusted brand in conservation national wildlife federation through our environmental justice team are so excited to help sponsor this effort Look forward to many, many more, and I'm going to be quiet and listen to the young people and Dr. Payton and other callers call in and talk to us about infrastructure and flooding and water and what that means. What are the impacts to the folk of Mississippi and what would they like to see change through laws and policies? So thank you so much. Happy to be with you. Oh, well, I appreciate the partnership. You know, today we're going to start off with a young man who's near and dear to my heart, Mr. Bryson Dixon. How you doing today, Bryson? Good. Good. Bryson is a wonderful young man. He is one of our top JPS students. He goes to Obama Magnet here in Jackson, Mississippi. So, Bryson, um, first off, tell the folks how old, how old you are. You there? Yes, sir. Okay. And what grade are you in? Fifth. fifth. In the fifth grade. Okay. So you've been farming all your life. As your grandfather's a farmer, your mother, she she does, she motivates us to farm. And so 
Farming, I believe, is one of the best ways to help people become more environmentally conscious and and to care about our environment. And so you've been farming. So what do you like about farming? Well, uh, first, I like how it'll teach you like responsibility of how to take care of things in my environment. Okay. Teach you responsibility and how to take care of things in your environment. And uh, and what else you learn on the farm? Well, I've learned how to print, how to plant like vegetables, fruits, like things that we want to eat. Mm -hmm. So would you say it's important for us to take care of our environment? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So you also live here in Jackson, Mississippi, right? Yes, sir. So you remember when we had the ice storm and the other storms we've had this year where the water went out and everything was snow all on the ground. You remember that? Yes, sir. So what was it like for you when we had the ice storm this year? Well, well it was kind of hard to plant crops and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was free. And die out. That's true. It, the crops do freeze and die out when it's had when we have bad storms, and that's because of things that happen in our environment. You have these negative weather impacts because of you know things that's not taken care of well in our environment. It's called a thing called climate change. So, what do you think that we could do to um, to be better? when it comes to taking care of our community and our environment. And you can find everyone in the community to grow more crops and to learn how to like plant and produce stuff. Mm -hmm. Great answer, great answer. So if you were to um, speak to some young people out there, what would you tell them about how important it is to take care of your environment? I think that I would tell them if it's really important to the environment of planting crops, you can save a lot of money instead of buying fast food. <laughs> You're right about that. You're right. About, it's definitely cheaper to to um, to plant your own crops. You learn a lot more. So um, I know I, I know it's a school night. We're gonna we're gonna move on to our next guest, but I did want to ask you one more question. Uh, who taught you about farming? My granddad. Okay. Now, what would you say if you had to um, say a few words about your granddad in farming? What would you say? Well, he has a farm named after last name, State Farm. He's been farming most of ever since he's been retired. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate you for tuning in. You can stay on the line. I want to ask um, Representative Summers to take over and um, speak to her, to Mason for a second, or respond to anything that, that you might want to respond to about what Bryson said, Representative Summers. Well, thank you, Representative Stamps, and definitely want to thank uh, National Wildlife Federation, uh, Ms. Simone Lightfoot, the staff, Rebecca, Gabrielle, for uh, having this conversation um, because we really want to hear from young people about what we can do as state elected officials to help make our community better. And what better way to know how to do those things and to hear from the folks who are impacted the most, and that's our children. Um, and speaking of children, I uh, definitely want to give a shout out to Mr. Bryson. Uh, job well done, sir. And look forward to, to meeting you at some point. In fact, I went to Obama, but it used to be called Davis Magnet back in my day. That was a long time ago. Uh, but I have my son here with me, and he's uh, in the fifth grade, and uh, he goes to Wales APAC, which used to be called Power APAC, um, and it is an elementary school in Jackson Public Schools, and uh, he is a very talented young man, and uh, so we're just going to have a little bit of a, a conversation about his experience 
with uh, some of the climate change conditions that we have experienced here in the city of Jackson. So Mason, say hello. Hello. And the first question I want to ask Mason, and I don't get to ask him this uh, very often, how does it feel to have a mother who is a state representative? Normal. It's normal? You feel any benefit to it? No benefit to it? It's not like you're famous or something. He said, it's not like I'm famous. Okay, we're going to give him a pass. So, Mason, tell us about your experience when um, Jackson um, had the snowstorms earlier this year um, in January and February. Tell us your experience and what we went through when that happened here in Jackson. In my experience with the snow in Jackson, I had to stay at my grandmother's house for a week. The water was completely turned off. We could not shower, flush the toilets, wash our wash our hands, or even brush our teeth the way we were used to doing it. Luckily, my grandmother, my grandparents' house still had water. I can also remember having to be light on the toilet on the toilet tissue and paper towels because my parents couldn't find any at the stores. My mom was able to put together several water drives. We gave out tons of bottled water to the community. And this wasn't the first time that we actually experienced um, a situation like this. I can remember back in 2020 when Representative Stamps called me and I, I think I was in New Mexico and he was telling me about the flooded waters um, that were um, flooding out many communities in our area, particularly in West Jackson. And we were able to have a lot of town hall meetings and get a lot of feedback from people about what we can do. But a lot of times we don't think about how these things impact our climate and our environment. And it really makes it harder for us to be able to live and have a good quality of life. Wouldn't you say so, Mike? Yes. Yeah. So as a, as a young man, Fifth grade, fifth grader who happens to have a mother who's a state rep. What would you say are some of the things that you would encourage me to do to help make our community better? Keep working. Keep working. And to prevent things like the snowstorm and us not having water and that sort of thing. Giving out water like we did before. Giving out water. Maybe having a emergency preparedness plan, that sort of thing. Making sure that families that don't have what they need, provide them with what they need. Um, another thing that we have experienced is this pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic. How has that impacted you? Because of COVID, my school was online. Online learning was something completely new. But it did help me get, get good grades and make goals that I never have achieved. But it was a little boring since I could not interact with other people. So I guess there were pros and cons to online learning. Now that we're back at school, we have to make sure that we wear masks all day until we get breaks outside. We also use hand, hand sanitizer throughout the day. My mom makes me lost all my book bag when I get home. She helps me make sure that I take vitamins because I'm not old enough to get the vaccine. So there are many things that our children have to go through when we talk about this climate change issue. And it's not just our children and us as state reps, right? Representative Stamps is even with farmers too. Yes, ma'am. So, so Mason, um, let me ask you a question here. So if you could ask your mother to pay, to do something at the state level when it comes to uh, school or education infrastructure, what would it be? If you could just ask her to do it and she go down there and make it happen, what would you ask her to do? Get more mask breaks. Get more mask breaks. <laughs> yeah. 
He's tired of wearing the masks. Okay. Okay. What else? What about to help our infrastructure, like our roads and bridges and streets? Tell the mayor to pave more roads. He said, tell the mayor to pave more roads. Okay. Okay. We'll get right on it. I'll send him a text message right now. Macy says, right. pave more roads. I'm going to go back to you, Representative Summers. I, I know you had some, some things you had, you wanted to say, then we'll move on to Dr. Payton. Yeah, sure. So, you know, um, when we think, when we talk about, you know, this conversation is about legislative lobbying for our young people. And when we think about lobbying, a lot of times we think about those high-powered individuals that make a lot of money that are hired by companies to come and tell legislators what they want to happen. But we forget that you don't necessarily have to be a high-powered paid lobbyist to be a lobbyist. Anybody can be a citizen lobbyist, even our children, whether they're of voting age or not. And so we want to encourage those who are listening that you have a voice. Uh, it's important for you to raise your voice. Uh, and it's important to let us know what are the things that you are most concerned about and then what are those some some of those solutions? It doesn't mean that you have to be a scientist. It doesn't mean that you have to be an expert, but you can certainly make time to talk with folks like me, Representative Stamps and other individuals that represent you so that we can bring your ideas to the table and help all of us have a better quality of life. You know, I do want to appreciate you and, 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 and Mr. Dixon for, for coming on today. I also, um, I asked for uh, Dr. Rosie Payton to come on to just highlight some things that they're doing in the community because I'm a firm believer that our whole world goes down with the less farmers that we have. Farmers grow up in such a way where we take care of our environment you know, we we practice the best practices that we can because we have to use the same or earth and the same soil to live from the next year. So um, so they're growing food out there, but I'm trying to grow farmers. And that's why I encourage more people to farm. And today we have Dr. Rosie Payton. She is the former superintendent of elementary schools at Jackson Public Schools. And when she retired, she got on the mission of growing farmers, which is also growing conservationists. Dr. Payton, are you there? I'm here. Dr. Payton, you've been you've been facilitating uh, farm activities. You've been facilitating um, some some community enrichment things. Tell us a little about the activities y'all been participating in over the last couple of years. Okay, um, of course, I I'm a retired educator, so. You know that stays with you in educating children and people. Um, so uh, what I have done, had, just as, as a small farmer by myself, uh, I have tried to engage other organizations to come with me. Um, and we had um, planting. We started planting on the outside, but of course, you know the weather, and it was cold, and the ladies didn't like out. <laughs> uh, in the cold weather and it did get wet on us and we would get bogged down and so um, during the pandemic we really wanted to help the elderly so it was several of us that we we're a lot of us are retired ladies and the same way I wanted those vegetables wanted fresh vegetables and wanted to have them all year around so um, we met we already knew um, representative stamps and found out he had a high tunnel and so we were very excited he allows us to use that high tunnel uh, to plant vegetables fresh vegetables all uh, so that we can do them all year round we plant the vegetables for the elderly we also um, do donate them to nursing homes um, where they're independent living and those ladies are so excited about getting those vegetables. Also, we donate to stew pot and other different places. We train each other and other young people. We're right now trying to get groups of small groups of young children and young people to come in to train them on how to uh, plant, build the raised beds, go from the beginning 
build raised beds, uh, get in the correct soil. It's a, a lot to learn um, how to water it and keep it watered, not having too much water. What are you going to do? You know, when it's, it's a, too much water, what, what do you do then? Uh, so sorry about that. Music calls, but um, so we are trying to train them. So right now we have several organizations. My farm is Greenleaf Farm, RNL Greenleaf Farm. And we partner with some other organizations as well as small groups. And right now we're getting those beds ready. And we do have to learn and know about a whole lot about the environment that we never thought about. About, uh, like, like I said, when we didn't have the high tunnel, um, the water issues with that, how, when it flooded, and how to replant and uh, when not to replant, what to plant when. So that's what we're doing right now. We're training ourselves as well as young people and young groups. So we Dr. Also, Payne, how many how many members are in your group? Right now we have about 17, probably about 20 right now, uh, ladies in the group. And they're so excited. Uh, this summer, we almost broke the high tunnel open with plants and they grow so big in the high tunnel. We had it full. Ladies were so excited that, and I didn't stop and we planted everything that we could think of. Mm -hmm. And it grew, really, it grew really tall and lot, didn't have a lot of space <laughs> afterward. We, so we've learned about space. So let me ask and, you this, Dr. Payton. When it, um, so it's 17 of you, between 17 and 20. Mm -hmm. uh, how much food were you able to produce just with the less than two dozen people? Like, you know, were you able to produce enough food for yourselves? We were able to pr produce enough to share with Stupot and with a nursing home. Uh, those that are in independent living. So as 20, well so 20 as, families, uh, y'all produce enough food for 20 families and to support uh, senior living facilities and, and the stew pot. Right. We were able to donate to those families, okay. those organizations. And we were really excited about that. Um, we want to continue that. What I'm really uh, interested in now are those people with underlying issues and rare um, illnesses, mm -hmm. um, like the different uh, alopecia, like uh, Chiari. There are uh, diseases that people have not heard of, whereas they have to have fresh vegetables only. Mm -hmm. And they're not necessarily vegetarian, but they have to learn about fresh vegetables and, and they have to, they can only have those vegetables. And so in order to grow those vegetables, of course, we have to have the right place, the right climate, um, the right, the, you know, the right drainage and so forth in order to grow that and the right kinds of equipment. So the high tone has been very good for that, mm -hmm. but we do want to expand into some other areas to do that. So since Representative Zakia Summers holds the entire checkbook for the state of Mississippi, what are some of the things that she could she could help you in doing? Uh, do you want me to answer that? <laughs> uh, really, um, we we do need not only education uh, about you know climate and how to deal with it in the area of um, of uh, planting and vegetables, but we need those things like the high tunnels that help you deal with the climate. Um, as well as, you know, there's a lot many irrigation systems that work that help us to plant the vegetables. We need equipment that will that we can work with inside, not only inside the high tunnel, but outside. We also have to learn about uh, you know eventually how to 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 plant some on the outside and how we can um, grow those vegetables and what are some of the things, you know, all the equipment that it takes to grow those vegetables on the outside of the high tunnel as well. Representative Summers, did you have any feedback? Um, some of the things Dr. Payton shared, some questions you might want to ask? 
Absolutely. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you, Dr. Payton, for all that you're doing uh, to help people get access to fresh food. Recording because, stopped. You know, Recording in, a state in progress. Like Mississippi, which is a rural state, we have a lot of communities that um, don't have grocery stores. I mean, there are so many food deserts across uh, across the state. And scripture tells us, you know, you don't just give a man a fish, but if you show them how to fish, then they can sustain, they can sustain themselves and then be able to teach something to the next generation. So, you know, my grandmother was a farmer. I did not have the privilege of being um, out on the farm, but my mother has shared stories with me of her having to pick cucumbers, which would, which wasn't something that she necessarily liked to do, right? But it, it was definitely um, something that was necessary, you know, in order for them to not only have food, but also to have food to sell, to make money. Um, so I just want to say thank you for all that you're doing. And we need to do more to be able to support um, our farmers, particularly our black farmers. We had a very, very long hearing yesterday about medical marijuana. And one of the issues that was brought up was the way that the bill is written now, It will that medical marijuana will only be allowed to grow indoor, which really puts some of our black farmers um, you know, um, at risk of not being able to engage in this program because they may or may not have the assets available to create indoor structures on land that they already own to be able to participate in what could be, you know, a, a money generating um, uh business or you know a new a new economy for the state of Mississippi and so all of those things play into you know our infrastructure our human infrastructure and making sure that we are supporting um, supporting black farmers across the state so and I appreciate that representative Summers you always are able just to bring stuff just bring stuff home and bring some focus to it um, dr. Payton um, so going forward, as y'all been growing farmers and helping people be more environmentally conscious, it's always been really important. I mean, one guy asked me one time, I was talking about how important farmers are to conservation and the environment. I said, do you know what, what are the, one of the most uh, damaging things on our farm is a bag of potato chips. And he was like, what are you talking about? I said, a, 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 a empty bag of potato chips. So we, we don't throw any litter down anywhere on our farm because a bag of potato chips can kill a 4,000 pound bull. You might say, well, how is that possible? Because when that bull, you know, potato chips, they, that bag tastes good. Cows like to lick things, right? So if that cow licks that bag of potato chips and he swallows that empty bag, he's going to suffocate and you're going to walk out there and have a dead bull because of litter. And that's how critical we are about putting stuff down. Dr. Payton can attest to that. We've had farm activities and, and, and my daddy losing his hair because people got litter yeah. on the ground. You I know? learned that from uh, your dad, Mr. Stamps. And we put something down and the cow grabbed it. <laughs> right. So, um, Dr. Payton, talk about your whole, uh, some of the things that we've done in the past and, um, and what you look for in the future. Um, I mean, like from the start when I, Trace pathways. And yeah, just give a little brief update about the okay. educational piece that we've done in exposing young people to farm. Okay, when I first retired, I, I did meet Mr. Mr. Stamps wanted um, to do something with his farm, Mr. Delma Stamps, um, to help educate children. And so, since I was first I retired, we went out there and we found, you know, there were so many educational pieces on a farm that you would never in the classroom we know these things but when you go out on the farm uh they are right there so um we uh went over the farm and found you know a lot of educational pieces that would help children not only learn about the farm uh, and get a farm experience but also would help in their educational path as well uh, so we did develop the 
uh, an agritourism for children to come out and learn about the farm. Uh, and in the Kifa, you'll remember, uh, you taught them how to call the cows. Yeah. Sui! <laughs> <laughs> and they really enjoyed that, you know, the way um, you call the cows and they saw the cows coming as you you called them. Mm-hmm. Not only that, they learned there were, Mr. Champs had all kind of old farm equipment in which we labeled that equipment um, and taught the children about it. Now, you're talking about the water and the weather. Even though I had been in education for 30 years, I learned so much about dealing with the weather and the water and, um, as we worked out there. You know, uh, how the cows had to be watered. They had, you know, you had to have water come to that farm. And then when the water came on a certain day, we couldn't, there were certain things we couldn't do. We had to work around weather. That's you right. know, if we had a, a bunch of kids coming on a rainy day, you know, we had to reschedule. Or even in so many days after that, with the parking, everything that you do on the farm mm-hmm. uh, has to do with. The, the weather and the, you know how the weather is going to be and where the water is going to be uh, for that day or for that time even when we we were growing different vegetables we had to know you know and he taught us a lot as well I think he talks a whole lot about the drainage and where to park because how would I have known that the cars had to park up here you know where the water drains down and so forth and so we labeled all everything out there for the children. And they came out and we had hay rides and it was beautiful and a great learning experience. So how many children did y'all did were averaging every year coming through that program? Wow. Um, I, I, I'm trying to think now. I know we had about a thousand children mm-hmm. and we only did that for two months, mm-hmm. October and, and November. And it was like five years in a row, right? Yes, we did that for five years. Right. I remember and, yeah, some now, that we really would have needed some help there because it's, you know, uh, you need a lot of people mm-hmm. there to keep that going. And uh, that's why I always talk about farming because, you know, when you walk out in the open land, you know, it's two places I've never seen an atheist. I've never seen an atheist in a fighting hole, and I've never seen an atheist in a farm. Because when you walk out on a farm, it's just you, the show, and whoever you believe in is your higher power. And it takes a whole lot of faith. And you're right. You have to be one with nature. and You have to respect nature. and Nature will respect your farm. Because oh, yes. that, that balance between you, your faith, and nature, and the environment, you have to maintain that balance. Because every year, you're going to be coming back to that same farm trying to to, to, to feed your family and raise resources for your family. So that's why I'm a big advocate about growing farmers and not just depending on the corporations because I believe they put off a lot of pollutants and things like that when they farm. But when we farm, we do a lot better towards our environment. And that's where I think that's what might be where I met Representative Summers from because our son, or one of her children was coming to the program um, back then. Representative Summers, turn back over to you if you have any comments or anything you want to say. In, in fact, it was Mason when we logged on to the Zoom. He said, "Isn't it? Isn't that the man that had the farm <laughs> when we went on the hayride?" I said, "Yeah, that's him." So uh, that was definitely a, a memorable experience for him. Um, and it's things like that when we can expose our children to uh, farming and where food comes from and how they can participate in that process and then see the food, you know, from seed to the table, um, you know, it, it not only helps them with knowing their process, but helps them with better health out- outcomes. Um, they can live healthier lifestyles and then they can influence their family members and those around them to also uh, live healthier lifestyles. And and as you all were talking about, you know, uh, Dr. Payton was talking about how the weather uh, plays such an important role in farming because if it rains too much, that could impact how the crops mm-hmm. grow. If it doesn't rain enough, um, that impacts how the crops grow. 
And a lot of times we try to put, we try to make weather the same thing as the climate. Um, but weather does have an impact on our climate. It's just that with climate change, uh, climate change takes place over a longer period of time. And when we see, you know, flooding due to heavy rains, or we see other um, weather, um, weather things like hurricanes and tornadoes and all those things, all of that plays an impact in what our community looks like, how our communities recover from those things. For, for example, you know, we just went through Hurricane Ida and thank God we didn't get the brunt of Ida like the coast did and New Orleans did. But when you think about they've been through all of these hurricanes and we're just, you know, we haven't finished hurricane season yet. Mm -hmm. Now those those communities have to rebuild. And you think about that in terms of a climate change context, particularly a policy context. And it shows you that, you know, we need to start preparing for the future mm -hmm. because all of this has um, a really big, a huge effect on black communities, particularly poor communities that may or may not be able to have the resources to recover in the way that we see some other communities. Mm -hmm. Dr. Payton, I know you have a, a, a tight kind of schedule. Do you have any parting words you wanted to share um, before we uh, open up the call in lines for people to call in? No, I, as we were talking, I was just thinking about my mom and um, you know, when she came out to the farm and the things that she saw that were familiar. Mm -hmm. And I know someone talked about the, the drinking water and, and how, it, you know, all of the, the weather and everything affects the quality of the water that we drink as well. Um, and another thing she saw was uh, she saw some sage grass out there and she mm -hmm. said, this is what we used to make rooms with. Mm -hmm. So, and she pulled those together, and we actually made in that in that grass swept much better than regular broom. Mm -hmm. uh, and and she did talk about how they you know we used to get water from the spring. Mm -hmm. That was good clean water, mm -hmm. good clean drinking cold water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we don't have that now. You know we often have to buy it and so forth. So we don't ever know what kind of life that we're going to come to you know so and that's what i'm looking at even the preserving the food canning mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're teaching um learning as well how to preserve those foods in jars and different foods and so we don't know what it is that we're going to be coming to so we have to be prepared and to know you know the things that it used to be <laughs> that, that, that and how they used to do it and how can we get back to that good, clean water and good, clean, good tasting food? Be very honest, me and spinach at the store is totally different from the spinach in my garden. It's mm -hmm. almost difficult for me to purchase it at this point. Mm -hmm. But I uh, thank you for the opportunity. I thank you for allowing us to use your high tunnel. I have learned so much and I do want to give credit to your dad for allowing us to use his farm and to learn all about the quality, different qualities of uh, the water and the weather and climate. And he taught us, you know, a lot out there as well. And thank you all, uh, Representative, and the others on here uh, for the opportunity. I've just enjoyed it. You know, Dr. Payton, you brought something to my memory that just a few years ago, the normal practice, especially here in Mississippi, to get water, you just dug a hole in the ground, That's put it. a pipe in there, drew the water out, no filter, just pull the water out, and then you drink it. Now we have pipes running water clean through a big okay. filtration <laughs> process, and it's questionable of when it's proper and you can and the health of it and all that. But just just like we didn't even like on the farm, we didn't get running water until 1983. So just in my lifetime, people were pumping the water, drinking the water, cooking with it and moving forward. And now you get water piped to your house. And sometimes they send you a notice and say, you got to boil it before you drink it. 
Yeah. That shows the erosion of the environment and our overall culture of how we practice humanity and, and how far we've gone. And if we don't make some serious changes, we will never be able to go back to something that is, um, it was definitely a lot more, a lot more inexpensive at that time to just dig a hole in the ground and run a pipe in it and you got water, you know? So, um, uh, call the caller number 601-948-5950. That's 601-948-5950. If y'all want to call in and ask Representative Summers a question about um, um, conservation or the environment, or if you have a question for the National Wildlife Federation, we've got some wonderful ladies uh, and experts on the, on the line here. If you have any questions, you can definitely call them or lean back over Representative Summers to make some comments until we get our next caller. So, um, you know, uh, you may be asking, you know, what are some of the things that the legislature has been doing to address some of these issues? Because Representative Stamps, you're right. If we don't do something about it, you know, not only will we not be able to return to what we used to do, but we're going to make it really hard for our children and our grandchildren and our future generations to be able to live. Mm -hmm. They may not even have the quality of life that we have now then mm -hmm. uh, because the planet will look a lot differently unless we begin to do some things different differently. And there are things that we can do, you know, just as part of our everyday living, like not littering. <laughs> you talked about not having a, a potato chip bag on the farm. You know, we shouldn't have potato chip bags anywhere on the street in the community except for in the garbage cans. Mm -hmm. That plays a huge role in the way our environment looks. Um, and it plays a huge role in if we want people to live in our community or don't. If we want businesses to do business in our communities or if we don't. Um, I was able to introduce two pieces of legislation um, that are related to the topics that we've been talking about this evening, one of the pieces of legislation would have required uh, landlords in the process of um, moving out their tenants to be responsible for disposing any waste that comes out of the uh, house or the apartment. You know, Representative Stamps, particularly in our area, when we have landlords that maybe evict people or people that move out, they just throw everything out on the curb and expect, you know, the garbage collection guys to come and pick it up. And they may or may not pick it up. That contributes to um, the issues that we have in our environment, in our community. Uh, another piece of legislation that I introduced would have established a task force that could study the flooding issues that we've been experiencing in the city of Jackson. Uh, we have a community in West Jackson over at Hemingway Circle. Every time it rains hard, those houses get flooded. That impacts their insurance, that impacts their quality of life. It disrupts transportation. They can't get in or get out. Uh, it is just a very bad situation. And it's due to, you know, lack of maintenance. It's due to um, our um, ignoring of our infrastructure issues, things that we can do to help prevent those things from happening in our communities. And so, you know, we need folks who are listening to this program, and we're very thankful for the partnership at NWF uh, for helping us to push and advocate for these issues it, it can't just be us. It's got to be the folks out in the community saying that we want a better quality of life. We know that climate change is an issue and we need to begin to do something about it right now. Well, I appreciate it. I want to also offer um, opportunity for anyone from the National Wildlife Federation. If you want some words you want to say about our partnership, this call, or even questions you want to bring up. Um, Gabrielle, Rebecca, or Miss Lightfoot, uh, y'all have any comments y'all want to make? Yeah, happy to to kick us off a little bit here. 
Um, and, and talk a little bit some of the legislation currently happening right now in Congress, too, that's very much connected to the issues that we're talking about in infrastructure and, and wastewater right now. And so there's some great uh, pieces of legislation around build, the Build Back Better plan. So if folks haven't had a chance to hear about it, I highly recommend folks go to white, uh, whitehouse.gov to learn more about the Build Back Better plan. Uh, currently in Congress, there's conversations going to try to move that forward. Um, but it's tied to a uh, bipartisan infrastructure framework as well. And so right now there's been a big push to try to move both pieces of legislation to not only just address some of the, the concrete infrastructure, right? When we're talking about roads and highways and when we're talking about wastewater facilities, for example, um, but the um, there's also some really great provisions around uh, universal pre-K, for example, for children um, and families uh, there's also uh, some great provisions in the Build Back Better plan around expanding uh, Medicare services. So right now there isn't any uh, vision or um, dental that's included in Medicare, for example. So this is another opportunity to be able to expand the services that are available. And so, you know, right now there's a lot of great push, a lot of great things happening. Uh, but as folks have mentioned, without us really pushing it and, and voicing it and really, you know, building um off of our conversations that we've had with different community leaders, whether that was our COVID-19 and environmental justice roundtables that we had last year, um, that was led by the environmental justice team, um, or several different roundtables that we've had with folks. Um, we've been trying to advocate for all these pieces that are interconnected, right? That are connected to our communities, that bring um, not only looking at our environment, but looking at childcare and, and all that. And so we do our best to, um, to, to advocate and move forward. Um, and now is the time. We have some really great legislation and really would you know, encourage folks to learn more about the Build Back Better plan and, um, and really you know, contact your representatives to, to support this bill that's currently, uh, these bills that are here in Congress. And so thank you so much for the opportunity to talk a little bit about some of the federal things that are happening, um, but it's all tied, it's all connected. There's some great movement happening now, but we gotta, we gotta get it over the finish line. Uh, and, and I'm confident that we can do that together. Thank you. Okay. Gabrielle, do you have any comments you'd like to make? Um, no, I think that, that Rebecca covered everything that, that I would have added. Thank you. I don't know if Simone had anything extra that, that she wanted to say. Okay. Ms. Lightfoot, do you have any um, comments about our conversation today and our partnership going forward? This was so rich. It was so nice to hear the babies. I look forward to us expand this and to have Dr. Payton share from the farmer perspective, a female at that. I'm a small farmer. That's just so unique. I look forward to featuring her. A state representative knows that we are putting together a publication of this partnership, mm -hmm. Dr. Payton, and we want to make sure that you're included um, in this work. Just, just great work. Look forward to what we can do moving forward i've heard some great ideas one thing we do uh, at the environmental justice team is we call it making pretzels we always take uh, great ideas and find ways to infuse them into the conservation work and connect humanity to wildlife mm -hmm. to policy to the babies mm -hmm. um, and you've been wonderful helping us do that uh today with with both of the young people and representative summers thank you so much for for prepping and talking to the young folk and Rep stamps. I look forward to us. Continue. We're going to find some more resources so we can do some more work. So I look forward to what that looks like. Thank you so much. We appreciate everybody for their work, for their for their just dedication to this entire endeavor, because it takes partnerships like the one with National Wildlife Federation to help move us forward, especially in in political environments like Mississippi. If you can change Mississippi, you can change the whole world. And, but Mississippi has good people. I mean, black and white, Democrat and Republican, we got a bunch of good people. And what we all, what we just need is just, you know, some, maybe some expertise from the national level to move things forward. Um, some resources to help connect some of these community organizations who are really trying and they can really, I like to, you know, multiply and duplicate things that are working and programs like um, the program Dr. Payton has, and several other community organizations. The one Representative Summers is doing in a few weeks with encouraging HBCUs are all great programs. Representative Summers, could you share about that program and how people can participate? Absolutely. And, and Simone really led into it about, you know, how our partnership continues 
we're very excited to have National Wildlife Federation to partner with us, uh, Representative Stamps. We're going to be co-hosting uh, It's a Busy Day, and BUSY stands for Black United Summit International. The mission of the organization is really to promote HBCUs and expose students to uh, the excellence that's held within HBCUs, our historically Black colleges and universities. So we're going to be having an HBCU recruitment fair. We have all of the HBCUs across the state, except for one. Please don't. The Alkanite Braves, don't get mad at me, but uh, our event is going to be taking place on October 9th, and it just so happens to be Alcorn's homecoming, so they won't be there in person, but Jackson State's going to be there, Valley State, Russ College, Tougaloo College, Hines in Utica, which we don't think about as an HBCU, but it is at a historically black college, will be at Battlefield Park on October 9th. We're going to kick off with a community cleanup at 930. The program starts at 10. We have a talent showcase where young people can perform and have an opportunity to win cash prizes. $100 for first place, $50 for second place, $25 for third place. And all of that is being sponsored by Mississippi Votes, my good friend, Arika Bennett, who owns that organization. We're also going to have other young performers providing entertainment. We have the Jim Hill Cheerleaders coming out, a Kappa League that's going to perform. Um, we're going to have food trucks there, lots of vendors, particularly entrepreneurs that are HBCU grads and other nonprofit organizations that are going to be set up. So it's going to be an amazing time. Uh, we're still looking for vendors. We're still looking for young people to participate in the talent show. Uh, as well as um, volunteers. Mm -hmm. And so you can go to busyconference.org. That's B-U-S-I conference.org. Click on events, find all the information there. Of course, you can go to my Facebook page and get information or contact me directly. And uh, we're just super excited about having this event in West Jackson, in District 68. Uh, it's a busy day. Hey, you always got stuff going on. I know you don't like me saying it, but I look at you as one of my mentors in the legislature. And thank you very much for, for your leadership and, uh, and, being, and being just a great friend. Well, you know you're my brother. I love you. <laughs> so um, thanks a lot, Representative Summers. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say thank you to the National Wildlife Federation for partnering with us and for helping stabilize um, local Black media. Media outlets like WNPR and 90.1 are critical to our community moving forward. It takes partnerships like this to stabilize them because it's just community-based radio. But this is one of the only 100,000 watt radio stations um, that people, everyday people who have community ideas and events can walk in the door and talk to the community. It doesn't happen too many other places and it happens here in Mississippi, Louisiana, Tennessee, and Arkansas. And so we wanna thank you for your partnership Thank you uh, to Ms. Wanda Evers and the whole WNPR family for being so welcoming and inviting for all that you do. And any parting words anybody want to say before we get off there? Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, well, great. We appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen. Today's show is being, um, being sponsored by the National Wildlife Federation and Michael Jordan Transportation Service. We want to appreciate everybody for all the work they're doing over the years. As we end every show, we always end every show by saying, never let anybody put you in a position where you don't love your own people. Because when you hate your own people, you're part of the very oppression we're trying to lift ourselves out of. I love you, Jackson. I love you, Mississippi. Hand the man, take us out of here. Yeah.